Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls the Brain Thoughts broadcasting radio, the Frankenstein earphone radio, the latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. controls. Today's episode of Frankenstein Control is brought to you by Fleas. Fleas? Just the concept of fleas. Yes, they will not infest your home if you pay them with dog blood. <laughs> So you know what to do. Take old Rover and bring them out in the backyard and pay off them fleas for flea tection money. Gotta get that Canis Vitae. <laughs> Frankenstein Control wants you to desanguinate your dog. <laughs> that's our fucking pull quote. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's our tagline. That's the sound bite we want. <laughs> Canis Vitae is uh, from the, the King of the Hill episode where he joins the, uh, the Warlock Coven and they want to make him drink dog blood. Why does he join a warlock coven? Because he's trying to fit in. And fit in? What do you mean? He ends up hanging out with uh, a guy who was probably supposed to be our age, voiced by David Cross, who leads a warlock coven. <laughs> like you do. Like My you do. God. Bobby. Who are we, Taylor? We are Frankenstein Control, and we're here to uh, bu- to fight back the flea horde. Uh, to my left, oh, I'm Taylor, by the way. To my left is Ada. I'm Ada, and I have a very tiny straw that I use to suck up individual fleas and then crunch them and swallow them. <laughs> to my right, as always, is b I'm b and does the dog blood thing work to keep flea from the red hot chili peppers out of your house? Because he keeps trying to break in and play the bass in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going, because he played uh, Donnie. Donnie in uh, Wild Thornberries. I sounded more like Nibbler. <laughs> yeah, it did kind of sound like Nibbler. <laughs> ah, Different yes. takes on the same concept. What a, what a fucking lovely day it's been. I don't know about you guys, but it's been winter and it's been uh, gloomy and rainy and shitty for like, yeah. the past five weeks now. Yeah, there's just been no sun the past yeah. couple weeks. It's I'm... like... It's been raining and it's just it's two p.m. and it's dark. You just you don't get a day. Yeah, you Fuck know you. there is no such thing as daytime anymore. This is that eternal 30 days. night. <laughs> thirty days of the, night. The installation wizard has summoned eternal night. <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone to shit. The the vampires from that Alaskan vampire movie are showing up everywhere. The thirty days of night. Thirty days of night. Speaking of vampires, yes. Guess who's watched nearly all of the seasons of what we do in the shadows? Yo, now? Yeah, no, I, that's a fantastic. Show. Yeah, we're in uh, I first, uh, I just watched the first two episodes of season four. Fucking guy. Fucking guy. Yeah, that show's fucking great. Uh, that's there. <laughs> it, it's definitely one of those shows where it's absolutely worth the hype that it, it like people build it up to. And that is probably my favorite live action show. It's it's very good. And Guillermo is very funny. <laughs> Guillermo is the best. <laughs> Guillermo's the best. I would love and Laszlo is a piece of shit and we love him for it. <laughs> I am so sick of like slam lamp jaw protagonists and things that I would genuinely love a vampire hunting video game where you played as Guillermo. Where you play as dumpy old Guillermo, yeah. yeah. That would be fantastic. Like, I would play the, the, the shit out of that. A big chunk of the appeal of that is that He's he's sort of like a, a, a chunky little soft boy. Yeah. And yet he can fuck up vampires left and right. Almost accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> so naturally it appears as if it's by accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that... that... Oh, that that show's really good. His increasing rampages are, uh, are fun to watch. <laughs> Very old boy. They really are. Instead of old boy, it's soft boy. It really is. <laughs> Guillermo... Fuck off, Gizmo! <laughs> Laszlo, where is Gizmo? <laughs> yeah, that that whole show is great, and uh, the recent happenings. Don't tell me b- what happens, but like with Colin Robinson and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! At the end of last season, yeah, and the the big stinger at the end is like, oh my god! <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's too that's too crazy. I love um Doug Jones as the Baron too. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's fantastic. Yeah, that 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 show's fucking sweet. But we I won't, I won't talk any more about it because poor Ada is in the in the dark in the shadows, shall we say about it? And who knows what I do in the shadows? Oh. I don't even know what I do in the shadows. It's too dark. I can't see. I masturbate a lot. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. I masturbate a lot. <laughs> 
That, that, now that guy had big vampire energy, Mister uh, Mister Ernest Borgnine. Uh, yeah, I uh, read Shadow wait, Bond. Oh, you read the fucking Twin Towers? That's, Elvis Presley's ghost. That's yeah. The, yeah, that's the one where the nine eleven shows up in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> and Elvis's little brother Tad Presley shows El, up. El- Elvis's uh, stillborn twin brother Jesse Presley. <laughs> this book. Is very strange, and I really liked it. Really? Yes. Oh, right. I, I would recommend it if you want a surreal experience. Uh, it is about music, it's about race, and it's about America. <laughs> and oh. whatever the fuck America means. Wow. It, uh, Golly. This book contains uh, multiple threads of like alternate history. Um you have the history that the uh, the main characters, um, this brother and sister, are experiencing, where uh, there have been multiple uh, secessions throughout the throughout the America. Oh my gosh! Um, now Americas. Uh, <clears throat> oh, the Americas. To the point where like Oklahoma and Texas are like their own thing now, and then like Good. why don't we just a do bunch that? Of, like <laughs> East Coast stuff. Yeah, just let they up. want us to see so bad. Let them. <laughs> Uh, there's a, a small point in the book where uh, somebody tries to copyright the word America. <laughs> I'm genuinely surprised that has not already happened. Yeah. America Chavez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, <clears throat> while uh, Jesse Presley experiences his timeline where he was born instead of Elvis. So uh, a bunch of shit that would have happened that Presumably only happened because uh, Elvis was big. Um, doesn't happen. So one of the big examples that Jesse personally runs into is the Beatles were never big in America. Uh, I, was, I was just about to say, so the Beatles never happened as yeah. a joke. Yeah, yeah, the Beatles never happened. <laughs> no Elvis and, means no um, Beatles. And what's, what's like extra like surreal about this is that uh, like he's, he's talking to John Lennon. And John Lennon is like pissed off at him and is resentful for the fact that he was born. And like he knows, no, I he just knows have to what, abuse my Elvis, family. Well, he knows that Elvis was supposed to exist <laughs> and what his contribution to uh, music and American culture would have been. Wow, so that's our timeline. Really, <laughs> really opened his mind. What, As, our timeline? What do you mean? Sorry, no, I was going to say. So he's our timeline's John Lennon, and is just aware of this alternate uh, thing that he was robbed of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Whoa. Yeah, like now, now I have to abuse my family and just be a regular asshole <laughs> instead of a popular music asshole with a very exactly. long butt crack. <laughs> that was fake. <laughs> Put it on the screen anyway. No, <laughs> no, you're you're getting it wrong. John Lennon had it. Wait, no, yeah, you're right. He he was the one with the giant butt crack. Yeah, then Yoko's and Yoko butt Ono's was, was like small. had a, had a Hank Hill butt. Yeah, she had a funny little <laughs> gross little Hank Hill butt. Uh, but uh. Photoshopped, of course. Also, uh, JFK, JFK was never president. He um, he never even like won his primary. He still got shot, though. No. <laughs> no, he, he lived... Um, well, no, wait, you're right. He did get shot. Oh, my God! <laughs> In the book, when he's... Um, he, like... Uh, like oh, my Je- God, does he become a villain? No. Is he like, oh, you're right, I'm gonna track it out? There's, Percy, there's really Percy. no, like, villain or, or anything like... Oh, like, oh okay. It's like... Yeah, this 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 story the story follows a very unconventional structure. Um but uh yeah, uh JFK um meets Jesse in like uh, a cl- uh, like one of Andy Warhol's clubs that he's <laughs> he's hanging out in and uh he gives him the same kind of rant of like what he could have been and like um uh. apparently uh Kennedy had like um Physical problems, like his, I like I, I swear, I swear I'd read about this before. The top of like, his head exploded at random. Like he, he's he's in a in this book he's he's older and he's in a wheelchair and um because like he had severe back problems. So it's, it's Bubba Hotep. <laughs> <laughs> That's on my list, man. Like, yeah, I, I completely movie. forgot about that movie. We yeah, need to watch I, I, that. I recently saw a trailer of it. I'm like, this movie looks like it fucking rocks. It does. That's like, a great movie. Okay, I gotta see that. Bubba Hotep. That's right. But, but the point is, is he lived, he was never assassinated because he was never a president. 
and he's wheelchair bound and extremely resentful and miserable about it. Like he goes off on on Jesse and is just like, like, yeah, I'm alive now, but I haven't lived. I could have been president. I could have fucked Marilyn Monroe. Now here I'm just rotting away in this chair. And like, uh, Woody like explodes out of like this. Uh, there's like some other woman that's, that's strung out on drugs that wants to to shoot Jesse and misses him and shoots. Uh, <laughs> is it, oh, is it Valerie Salanis? Because that's who shoots Andy Warhol. Love? Really. I can't remember what the name oh, was. Is it, Va- uh, it might have. Yeah. yeah, Valerie sounds Valerie right. Salanis. It might have been Val. Yeah, that's who shoots. Uh, that's who shot Andy Warhol. Hmm. In, in that's who um, in the Venture Brothers thing where they had the Scooby Gang and all of them are references to criminals and stuff. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the Velma yeah, character yeah. was Val. <laughs> she was supposed to be uh, Valerie Salanis. That that's probably who it was because she had that same kind of like ultra feminist. The off, rad femme. Cut off all scum the scum manifesto. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that lady was crazy. She was. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not calling feminism crazy, but that lady, that lady was, was crazy. Fucking crazy. <laughs> she had some pretty bad experiences that made her that way, but uh, she was, she was a little uh, cuckoo. Now all I'm thinking of is fucking Conan O'Brien playing Andy Warhol in the Weird Al movie that came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. I want to see that one too. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I, I recommend that. Too but many movies to see. Continue. I know. I, so much to yeah. do. So much to see. So, so what's wrong, wrong with taking, taking the back streets? streets? You never know if you don't glow. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's good. Book is good. It's very weird. If you don't, if you you only want to read a book with like a, a very cohesive narrative, don't read this because it doesn't have that. <laughs> but if you uh, are can appreciate the 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 weirdness, uh, this is a excellent book. <laughs> hmm. Sounds cool. And what's it called? Shadow Bond, a I tried novel. Shadow Bond. S H A D O W B A H N. Like so like, like Autobahn. Yes. Yeah. Shadow Bond. Yes. There there's apparently a a road that goes through America that like I can't remember how they describe it, but it's it's kind of described as though it's magic. It's liminal it's, space. It's, yeah, but that is referred to as the Shadow Bond. Oh. Um, it's written by Steve Erickson, who I don't know what else he wrote. I uh, looked that up the last time you talked about it, and that book is so little known that it does not even have its own Wikipedia page, mm. which is uh, unusual yeah. for, for books. Yeah, Somehow it came we're single-handedly out. responsible for Steve Erickson becoming a, a, <laughs> a fucking Pulitzer Prize winner. Out of fucking nowhere. He's got awards and shit. <laughs> oh, that's good. Didn't he write something else? He must have written something. He's got the Minority yeah, Student Achievement Award. On here, let me, let, me, let me skim through his back thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Nine other novels, including Zeroville, Our Ecstatic Days, and These Dreams of You. I don't know if I've heard of any of them. His work has appeared in numerous periodicals, such as Esquire, Rolling Stone, Smithsonian, American Prospect, and Los Angeles. Uh, yeah. Cool. I've been playing video games. <laughs> I too have been playing video games, quite a bit of video games, and working on that model. Ah, that's the that's, really cool model the with real, the paint. It's it's so close to being done. I can I can almost taste it. <laughs> I would like to taste. I would like to taste that model. It looks like it tastes good. It does. It looks like it's made of delicious purple candy. It do. I'll send Ada a picture. It's made out of guava candy. <laughs> oh. Are you it making is... are you making sure to fill the joints with chili powder? They are filled with chili powder, actually. <laughs> that's how you get that's how you tighten joints on the Gundam models. You put chili powder on them. Okay. <laughs> those those candies, now that I've had a moment to recover from the experience. Uh-huh. From the evil. If if you ever eat those silica gel things that come in like clothes, <laughs> what? that's that's what I imagine they taste like. <laughs> what? Yeah, the little do not eat packets that you get in like jerky. You imagine them to have a flavor? I imagine them tasting like that. Huh. Because that <laughs> tasted like something you're not supposed to eat and did. Yeah, it tastes like it, 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 it tastes like an extreme desiccant. Yes. Like uh, you were enjoying it till you till you bit on it. Uh yeah. You you here, take the package, take it home. And just suck them halfway. I thought no. you were about to say, take it home and give it to your infinite daughter. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will absolutely not do that. Although, although, what would you do if, if your baby was like, mm, and liked it a bunch? If she liked them, she can have them. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, at least somebody can eat them. Yeah, at least somebody can eat them. At least like there's a target would, audience for this. You wouldn't be the least bit worried? You wouldn't be concerned that your child like is an alien? Eh, not really. She can't be any weirder than have you know. I'm her father. That's that's the weirdest thing. 
that could possibly happen to her. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh Another God. awkward transition. What were we talking about? Oh, video games, um, yeah. models, and stuff. I've been playing, when I, I've been playing, I mean, I've been watching Lissa play uh, Stray, that game with mm. the cybernet, uh, the cyberpunk kitty game. The game what, where you are, you am's a cat. Where you am's a cat. And it's really cute, and it's really fun, and um, it's really well animated. Like, the cat is just, yeah. it's genuinely fun to run around as the cat. And you get this little um, robot buddy that is sort of like your Pokedex, your your little helper, your little whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. your, your little Navi, that little... Uh, hey, listen. Uh, yeah, your little hey, listen. And it keeps itself in this iPad backpack that you have. Mm-hmm. And the scene where the cat gets the backpack is fantastic because for the first like 30 seconds of gameplay after the backpack is affixed, the cat alternately just randomly flops down and lays motionless on its side or it (laughs) slinks about very, very awkwardly. And the reason this killed me is because those are exactly the actions Pumpkin takes when we put him in his hot dog costume. Yeah. <laughs> he shuts down and falls over on his side and lays there like he's been poleaxed. <laughs> or he, he, he slinks about on his belly. Like, he, you mean like hit by a poleaxe? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. You watch- it was it was very very well animated, very lovingly animated. It was very accurate and well researched, and all of the cats' behaviors you could tell that they actually like. Oh, let's let's put real kitty behaviors in this. That's yeah. really fun. So, for Pers- third person kitty, yeah, made by people that love pussy. Yeah. Ah, and you run the enemies in it, uh, for lack of a better way to. The, the, the I guess they're hostile entity. They are enemies. You can't really. There's not really combat. It's yeah. more like chase. Uh, and puzzle-based. The hostiles. The hostiles uh, are, in fact, giant tick-like bugs that look like the horrible flea monsters that I... When when we were doing our intro about the fleas, <laughs> uh, that's just what I was picturing were these things. They're called zerks, okay. and they just look the like Yerks. giant... They look like if you combined uh, head crabs and ticks. Huh. Ugh. Yeah, they're not real pleasant to look at, but... The icky. They sound bloated. They they are bloated. They, they come in a swarm... And they uh, come after you and jump on you and try to leech your life force. Oh my god, how big are they compared to the kitty cat? They're like a third of his size. Oh, okay. Mm. So they're okay. like they're like an orange. Yeah, like a grapefruit. <clears throat> yeah, grapefruit sized. The 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 threat comes from the fact that like hundreds of them rush you. Yeah, and oh. you got to like run from a swarm of them. Ugh. The size of a tangerine. <laughs> Of a tangerine. Tangerine. Oh, tangerine. That reminds me. Uh, I got a recommendation for everybody, all you fuckers at home. Do tell. I got a movie that I was skeptical. Skeptical. That's the one. That I was spectacle of. Mm. It was a, a movie that was recommended to me by my father. So at first I was like, hmm, okay. Mm. But then it was recommended to me by my brother. And I was like, oh, okay. Because they are very, very different people, yes. obviously. <laughs> and so I was just like, okay, wow. Uh, Which brother? Uh, you have two. Uh, my younger brother. Ah. Eckert. What up, Eckert? How you doing, bud? Hey, um, buddy. A- anyway, uh, yeah, no. Uh, it's a movie called Bullet Train. It came mm-hmm. out uh, a little last while year. ago. Yeah, it came out last <clears> year. <throat> and, uh, I, you know, it just went up past my radar. Like, I saw a trailer for it. I think it was before Everything Everywhere All at Once there was a trailer for it. Yeah, probably. Because I, I saw the trailer, too. Yeah. I saw the trailer. I'm like, yeah, it looks okay, I guess. It looks fine. Like, whatever. Action movie, Brad Pitt. You know, probably some entertaining character interaction. Sure. Seems like a romp. Yeah, it, it seems like a, that is literally... After we watched the trailer uh, a second time, me and my girlfriend, we literally looked at each other and was like, eh, it looks like a romp. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, uh, how how right and wrong we were, because like it was indeed a romp, but it was a lot more than that. It was, I freaking really recommend this movie. Like, it, it was a fucking awesome movie because like... Uh, Is it about the Sheen content? It's about being, it's on, they're on a Shinkansen and the movie revolves around a number of, a number of characters, uh, who all specialize in murdering people for money. Oh, assassins. They're all assassins. Yay. A train, a train full of assassins. Assassin train, you got my interest. <laughs> yeah, and they all ended up on there due to, uh, circumstances. And the whole movie is, like, going through all these different assassins, like, 
lives and like you I love shit like that. The the thing that makes that movie stand out is definitely its attention to how deeply it follows each of these characters to the point where it seems like every character is the main character of their life. That's cool. You know, like, uh, and thereby, by proxy, the main character of the story. Like, it's really weird, but, like, cool how everybody is, like, so many of these different characters are very fleshed out, and they have really fun character traits. My favorite character in the movie is a guy named Lemon who likes Thomas the Tank Engine. And he kills people? And he kills people. <laughs> Does he kill them with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine toys? Uh, he kills people with his friend Tangerine. Mm. Uh, the code names, of course. Is Tangerine a gun? Tanger- no, Tangerine is another guy. Ah. Yeah, Lemon my, and Tangerine. Uh, oh, I get it. So there's the Citrus Assassins, so named by Ada. Because <laughs> all her characters are Citrus. Yeah. And um, so, like, many folks would like it because the, the, the plot as it unfolds, you're always wondering what the fuck's going to happen next, which I love that in a movie. It's like by far the most important quality in a movie to me is I need to be wondering what the heck's going to happen next. Are they all after the same guy? Is it like a smoke and aces situation? Or oh, is it's, it a... it's more because you think this is just a simple job at first. The main, it follows your main character, Brad Pitt, whose name is code name is Ladybug in the movie as a joke because he's very unlucky. Mm. And so... <laughs> Uh, his bad luck often leeches into other people, and that's why he's such a good assassin. So he's like the uh, the negative luck build assassin character, like a D and D character who just bad shit happens to people around him. He takes credit for the kill and gets the money. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> except he's also well trained and like knows how to defend himself quite mm. adequately enough. It's just even when he's trying not to kill people, he ends up killing people. Mm. Um, and like. It's just supposed to be a simple snatch job of getting on a train, finding a particular suitcase, taking the suitcase, and stealing it, and getting off at the next stop. So the train makes a lot of stops, and every time the train makes a stop, he gets interrupted somehow, and he can't leave the train because, unbeknownst to him, a huge fucking conspiracy is unfolding on this train. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of a part of it. But then all the other assassins, none of them are in on it either, particularly. Except they kind of are, except they aren't. Mm. Like, it's, ooh! Uh, you, you you really get involved, like, what the fuck is going on with this fucking story? Also, you'd like it because there's a lot of brutal kills in this movie that are ridiculously <laughs> violent. I like things like that. <laughs> the, uh... Lots the... of, there's, like, case in point, there's this one part where a bunch of gang members end up in this big shootout on the train, and, like, one guy, <clears throat> um, gets up on the roof... And then the other, uh, another gang guy is following him up on the roof. But then the first guy on the roof goes, Ooh, and like ducks down because a big sign is coming, like an overhanging sign. Right, right, right. And it just straight up, like it doesn't hide the fact that it just shears that guy in half. Oh, that's he cool. He just fucking blood everywhere just gets sliced in half by the sign. It's crazy. And like, there's a lot of deaths like that in this movie. Brad Pitt's uh, and mission. A, and a very special snake. Brad Pitt's mission, uh, as you described it, is exactly like the the shitty mission they give Dale on King of the Hill when they're trying to like boost his ego and like they hire him for a fake mercenary job. <laughs> that's the that's the episode with the pocket sand because <laughs> he goes into a train station to retrieve the briefcase and he just gets some guy's briefcase because he's an idiot. Really? <laughs> and that's when he does that. I can't die on my first mission. It's bad for business. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, the funny thing is, is that you think the briefcase is going to be this big MacGuffin, and it kind of is, but it also really isn't. Like, a, you, you, the movie keeps setting up these expectations for you and going, ha ha, nope. <laughs> you're like, ooh, stop doing that. But, like, I like that a lot about the movie. It was good. Uh, directed by the guy who did uh, Deadpool 2. Oh, okay. So there was that. Okay. Um, and there's some very spe- there's a very special cameo at one point in the movie that's very funny as well, but I will not spoil. Weird Al shows up and shoots somebody. That'd be really <laughs> funny. I wish. That'd be great. No, uh, but um, yeah, and like the for anyone concerned about like, oh, so it's the story called Bullet Train taking place in Japan, but it's following the story of a white man. I get it. Mm. Mm. But like by the end of the story, you find out that this whole thing is actually the story. This whole movie is actually the story of an ex, uh, uh, of an ex Yakuza man. Ah, so like it, it folds, it all folds back. It all folds in interesting ways, like a big, funny origami crane. Was he recounting? 
Was there? Is it all revealed or a to me? Or a gun me? Or a gun me? <laughs> or a gun me? Yeah. <laughs> what were you saying? Oh, I was gonna say, is the is the whole thing revealed to have been the memoirs of a yakuza man who cast himself as Brad Pitt in his own recollection? That would have been <laughs> fucking hilarious, but no, it's not. <laughs> that would have been so funny. <laughs> I'll be played by Brad Pitt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, uh, it's all all the characters in that movie are really fun. So I I, I made the joke uh, two episodes ago that I looked like Daniel Stern, the the uh, the the, <laughs> from Home Alone. the tall the tall burglar from Home Alone. <laughs> mm-hmm. And because I was like, who would I cast myself at? You know, the, the it, in my, my vain, glorious, uh, if there was a movie about me. Um, uh, so I made that joke many episodes ago. I've made that joke several times in my life. Um, but I, I just on a whim, I looked him up. He's exactly my height oh. and was my current age when he made Home Alone 1. Huh. So, oh, really? uh, yeah. That's oh. funny. He's funny. That, that is funny. I mean, obviously, they... they... You know, the choice for casting me in my biopic is pretty fucking obvious. Jack Black? Black. What? No. I was going to say uh, Andy Sedaris, but whatever. Fine. Andy Serkis? Because <laughs> you can only really be uh, CGI. <laughs> you have to have Andy Serkis do a little mocap suit and crawl around. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And, uh... Yeah, I want Doug Jones to be my actor, and then they, like, they <laughs> in a mocap suit the whole movie... <laughs> And they just mocap Doug Jones onto a CG scan of my body. It's just Doug Jones as me, uh, Matt Berry as you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the guy who plays. I'd take that. I'd fucking take back. He's fucking hilarious. The guy who plays Guillermo is Brian. Oh, <laughs> Brian! Yeah, <laughs> he does remind me a lot of Brian. That might be why I really like Guillermo. He's very so endearing. <laughs> yes, he has a very endearing personality. Just the, the the extent to which he's put upon by everyone. Oh, yes. <laughs> is... the, I, the thing that's great about that show is that, like, it, it once Guillermo's thing is revealed, it becomes a lot more push and pull and a yeah. lot less just constantly piling on Guillermo. Yes. I mean, it, obviously, they still do constantly The balance of power shifts and it's funny. Yes, there is a, <clears throat> there is a balance of power. So nothing gets old. Like, nothing nothing sticks around too long. It's, yeah. That's why the show what we do in the shadows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's good. But yeah, so bullet train, highly recommend what we do in the shadows. Highly recommend, uh, 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 the shadow bond. Highly recommend, <laughs> um, what we do in the shadow bond. I don't recommend. Yeah. Um, I also don't recommend, uh, cast the, the, the Taylor Russell biopic. They totally miscast him. <laughs> they, they, they broke Austin Russell out of prison and <laughs> cast him. <laughs> They got they got that close-eyed boy from the chess uh, show who played Dudley <laughs> to play you. <laughs> Wait, what? I, I was just trying to think of actors who would be completely incongruous as you. <laughs> and uh, that dude who played Dudley in the Harry Potter movies who grew oh. up and uh, was on that chess show with that redhead girl. He's in, um, whatchamacallit, the he's... the funny blue eyeball or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, 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 he's on that and he's in that um, The what? Devil All the Time or whatever movie too. <laughs> We're going to break his side control. We don't say the right name of anything, so you don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We make a bunch of cryptic allusions to shit you haven't seen, and we call it by the wrong name. <laughs> Honestly, that's how Shadow, Shadow Bond is written. Oh, no! Because they, they very rarely refer to Elvis as Elvis. He's always like described as... Uh, the king? Like, the, yeah, the king or the greatest American performer or uh, something like that. Like they, like they do say Elvis at a couple. Oh, spots. okay. I was like, is this a Super Bowl situation? No, like, no. They they do say Elvis a couple to, times. We've been invited to the superb owl. <laughs> Did you see all the um, uh, stuff about that guy who played Elvis in that movie that just came out? And now he talks like Elvis in his regular life, and people are roasting him for it. Bubba Hotep? <laughs> no, not Bubba Hotep. <laughs> there was just an Elvis biopic. Yeah, that the one that nobody fucking saw. The one that nobody fucking saw. And the dude who plays Elvis did not used to talk like Elvis. And the movie finished rapping in, like, 2021, and he still talks like Elvis. And people are like, you gotta stop talking like Elvis. It's fucking silly. See the motherfucker that played the It Clown? I think... No. That's the... That's a... That's a scars guard or one of them sweetie boys. <laughs> sweetie boys. <laughs> I have I okay, I got I'm having trouble keeping track of all these weird bug-eyed uh, <laughs> young stars that have been hiring in Hollywood these days. They all got big goofy bulgy eyes these days. I can't keep track no more. They got big goofy foreheads like Christina Ricci. 
Yeah, y'all uh, listing off actors to play you. I can't really think of any actor or actress that like resembles me enough to any to like for anyone to make the comparison. Like I, I've never really had anyone be like, "You look like this this person." For, to cast to accurately portray your manner made your mannerisms and eccentricity the only acceptable casting for you would be taking the Toph approach when they had like Toph <laughs> played as like the hulking <laughs> the huge hulking person who was just completely something completely different just something completely different you know <laughs> Ada you will be cast as oh it will be the the the, the long time career return of Wanda Sykes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be our diversity for the movie. Sure. And, pe- and people get really mad that I can't believe they made Ada, they made Ada Black. Can you believe this? <laughs> That's such a, a woke recasting. <laughs> oh, no. No God, woke. it took me a second to remember who Wanda Sykes was. I'm like, is she in Mad TV? No, that's someone else. No, yeah, she's, I, I, she's it, stand-up it clicked, comedy. It clicked. I remember who she, what she looks like now. And then, like, a few bit parts in, like, certain movies. She'll yeah. make a cameo every now and again. Yeah. It's like, funny lady who appears in one scene. Yeah. And, and says something says something sassy, and then yeah. the movie Does just someone goes, need to be going. sassed at? Here comes Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember those commercials that came out? Uh, when, when they were, when like, there was a bunch of boys like laughing and like, <laughs> that's gay. And then Wanda's like, why you gotta say gay? And then it was like, oh, this is, this is I mean, like, I, I mean, they're, they got a good message, but this is just a cringy commercial. <laughs> it makes me like shrink into myself. <laughs> like I, I, I transform her into a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> nice throwback. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> Rice die. I am. Coffins don't come back, V Rice. At least I hope they don't. Uh oh. Wonder who that could be. Uh, it's one of the coffins that came back. Uh oh. <laughs> Get the salt. Get the salt. Get the, okay, I got the salt. <laughs> okay, one. Uh, we're going to open the. Beer, I need you to open the lid real quick. Okay? I don't want to. No, you need to open the lid, and when he comes out screaming, I'm going to throw the salt in there. Well, how do we know what's in there? Okay, don't worry about it. One, two, three. Ah! Oh, God, it's Austin Russell. That's where he's been. <laughs> now, even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secret to save the entire human race and the entire universe.